So today, we're making a transition. What is up guys, Max here, and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, clearly we're making the transition you saw in the beginning. So let's jump over to After Effects and get started. P.S. It's really simple. Now if you're anxious and restless and don't want to watch the tutorial, just hop down to the description and download the project file. No big deal. Here we are in After Effects, pretty simple. As you can see, I play this thing out. There's two colors on this one. Um, really simple, in and out. It's all based on one shape. So let's start a new composition and get going. So I'm gonna right click in my project panel, and click new composition. Uh, mine is set to 3840 by 2160 at 60 frames per second for animation. Um, we'll call this new transition. Duration, 10 seconds. Typically for stuff like this, I do it 10 seconds. So the next step is to create a circle. So grab your circle tool, hold shift on your keyboard, and drag out a perfect circle. Mine currently is a blue solid circle. That's not what we want. Make sure to select your layer, go to the top, hit the fill button right here, the blue text on fill. A little dialog box pops open, and we're gonna turn the fill off. But we need to turn our stroke on. So we'll grab the stroke, do the same thing, and turn it on. Doesn't matter what size right now, we're gonna go with this. So color, doesn't matter. Let's make it, I don't know red for the purposes of this tutorial. Now we need to create the spin animation that you saw from the original. So with your shape layer selected, we'll drop down this little arrow, drop down on ellipse, drop down on stroke, and we will uh, keyframe the stroke width. So hit this little keyframe button and drag it down to zero. So that's zero keyframes at the very beginning. We'll go down on our timeline to, I don't know, a second, and we will stroke this up to around 360 pixels. So it's a huge, fat, keyframed stroke on this thing. Now, on the shape layer, we're gonna click the shape layer and then click add right here. We'll go to trim paths, add that to this. Now this is gonna be how it draws out on screen. So we'll drop down trim paths. Um, we'll keyframe our end, go back in time, and then bring the end down to zero. So it creates another keyframe at zero. So basically it's stroking itself up and drawing out at the same time. Pretty simple. Pretty cool. Now we need to create the out animation, which is the how it goes out on the transition. Also very simple. So we will keyframe our stroke once again with this little keyframe button right here. Go down on timeline and then bring it back down to zero by thinking, taking 360 and turning it into zero. Now we will do our start keyframe on trim paths. So we will keyframe start at 0% right here bring it back in time, go down in time, and then key, uh, bring the start keyframe up to 100%, which is kind of the reverse of end. It, instead of drawing on, it's gonna draw off now to the start. That makes total sense. Now, as you can see, the basic animation is this, stays on for a second, and then goes away. Draws out like that. Okay, now we need to make these keyframes dynamic. So we're gonna highlight all of these keyframes, we're gonna right click and do keyframe assistant, and then easy ease, which makes them a little more dynamic for our taste. We'll take it a watch and see what it looks like. That's not quite sexy enough, in my opinion, so we'll try to make it a little better. What we're gonna do is uh, stroke, bring the stroke a little faster, um, bring it down like this, bring this one down right here, and this one about right there. Now, what we'll do is we will highlight all these keyframes right here, and then we'll hit the little graph editor tool click the graph editor, and now you have the arcs of the keyframes. Now you might not see this, and if you don't see it, what you'll do is you'll click this. Um, choose graph types and options right here, and then hit edit speed graph. You might be set to value graph, which makes it look weird, so just change it to speed graph, it'll fix all that. Now, what I'm gonna do is highlight all these keyframes by just selecting all the graph points, and I'm gonna pull these anchor points just like so. Now this makes the graph very aggressive, so it actually, does this now. Now if you want to better grasp the graph editor, I do have a tutorial that I'll link down below or in that little icon thing on top of the video somewhere. Click that to find out more about the graph editor, but let's continue this tutorial. Now I'll do the same thing for my other keyframes. I'll highlight all the stroke keyframes, hit the graph editor, and I will highlight these. Now because the start is reversing out, it makes that one graph go upside down. It's just how After Effects works. Ignore it. Still the same thing. We will grab this anchor point, pull it, grab the other one and pull it. Now, 
we should have the animation we're looking for, but we're missing something. The stroke is not like a rounded tip like we saw before. Really simple. Go to your stroke and your shape layer, and then we'll find the line cap. It's a butt cap right now. We'll change it to round cap, which rounds the edge. Does that. And now you can kind of play with it, make it your own, make sure it scales out the way that you like it for it to scale out. I'm pretty happy with that. Now what we're gonna do is create a new adjustment layer to control the colors of the composition. So when there's a lot of different shapes moving, they all can change the color at the same time via our one selector inside of After Effects. So right click in your layer panel, new adjustment layer. Pops up right at the top, super simple. Now open up your effect controls for the adjustment layer. So we'll go to window and then effect controls adjustment layer two. Opens that up, we'll right click in here and then we'll go to expression controls and then color control. Right click again, expression controls and color control because we can have two separate colors at the end of the day. But first, we'll do this one. So click your shape layer one, drop down on this, drop down on contents, go to your stroke color. This is the color of the stroke. So if we change this, uh, it'll change colors. That's what we want. But I want all the stroke colors to change at the same time when we duplicate this layer to make all the little circles. So what we're going to do is click Command or Alt on your keyboard, Command for PC, I mean, Command for Mac, Alt for PC, hold Alt, and then click the little keyframe icon on color. Opens up the, you know, the expression controls. Then take the little squiggly, um, select adjustment layer to open back up the effects you see them right here. Take the squiggly of adjustment layer and drag it up to your first color control. I can see it right here. Now, this will make it be the color of that um, color control. So if we actually duplicate this shape layer, Command D, drop down on contents, or drop down on shape layer, drop down on contents, drop down on ellipse, drop down on ellipse path, and change the size of this, make it a little larger. I think you can see where we're going now. Um, this thing will draw out like this, and if we change the color via our color control, the first color, change it to let's say white, they both change colors at the same time. That is the point of a color control inside of After Effects. It's really, really helpful for making templates and stuff like that. So now, um, we're gonna take this layer, drag it down in time a little bit, and hit on our keyboard and rotate it to a different place. Ah, but there's a problem. These shapes aren't centered. So we need to grab these shapes and go to our Align tool in After Effects. So Window and Align, already open for me, might not be for you, um, and click Align to Selection. So Align to Composition. So in the center, in the center. So when I rotate this thing, it'll rotate perfectly around this, but it's still not perfect because the anchor point is probably a little off. So we'll grab this, grab the Anchor Point tool, which is at the top, and we will grab this anchor point and click Control to clip it to the center of that object. Do the same thing for shape layer one, just in case. You wanna make sure all your anchor points are centered up for this type of animation. So now, we rotate this thing, it'll rotate perfectly around this circle without fail. Okay, cool, we'll rotate this. We will Command D or a Control D to duplicate this once again. Um, go back in time, because this is gonna be the smallest one on the screen move this one down. As you can see, they're just kind of like, gonna, you might, I think you get this by now. Um, change the shape size of this, contents, ellipse, ellipse path, uh, make it a little smaller. This is gonna be the really small one. It should be the smallest one. This next path needs to be smaller to cover up that line. And then shape layer two, which is like now the third one, contents, ellipse path, and make it smaller. And we're not doing the scale of the, the objects because if we increase the scale, we'll increase the stroke size. That's why you do the ellipse path. So, uh, control D to duplicate this. Um, contents, ellipse path, make it larger. Not too large where it uncovers the other one. Then hit R and we'll rotate it. A whole bunch it's over here is fine. Command D, oh, by, by the way, move this down the timeline, move this one down the timeline, drop this down, drop this down, drop this down, drop this down, make it a little larger. They should be a little bigger. There we go. Like so. Command D, once again, make sure to rotate your previous one, I forgot. 
rotate it back this way. You can always fix the rotations later on in your composition once you're happy with the animation. Make this one a little larger. And one more should do it. So Command D or Control D on a PC, Command for a Mac. That's just duplicating the layer, super simple. And bring up the path size until it's right here. And we should have a pretty slick animation. So. Not bad at all. A little different than my original, but if you play with the keyframes, play with the rotations, eventually you can get something that kind of looks like this. Kind of a smooth, perfect animation. And as you can see on the other one, the bottom layer was at the top, so we'll reposition all of these to be kind of like that. Now, we want to separate these colors. We want to make it like the other one where it's like two separate colors via the color controller. Super simple. What we're gonna do is go to our effects and presets, window effects and presets if you don't see it, click type fill, um, drag a fill onto, let's say the se second layer, shape layer one right here. Red is fine. Drop down on all of your contents and stuff like that. Go down to effects, go down to fill, alt or command click, the little stopwatch for the color. Do the same thing we did before. Adjustment layer, drag this up to here, Onto the red, we'll change it to blue just so we can see it working. Then we'll take this fill, um, Command C or Control C to copy it, and then paste it on number four, paste it on number six, which makes the dial back like that. And now we have a nice little animation. The last step is to turn on the motion blur, right there. And now we have a pretty cool animation. Not bad, not bad for a quick little animation. But that's all I have for today. So as always, I'm Max. If you're new to the channel, feel free to like and subscribe, follow for more content. I do a lot of different things on this channel and I'm growing and I'm trying to expand. So join the family. Other than that, have a wonderful evening, night, morning, wherever you're watching this from. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.